To obtain the best outcome possible in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer, we have to first identify what are our goals in the management of that patient. I think there are many factors that play into the decision-making of what agents to use, what regimen to choose, and how long to treat these patients. Is the treatment curative or is it palliative? Is there a possibility that downstaging will lead to a resection that could be potentially curative? What is the performance status of the patient? Can the patient handle combination chemotherapy? Is the patient fit physically? And is the patient young enough to sustain combination chemotherapy? So those are important factors, and, and no, of no less importance is the molecular profile of the uh, tumor as well as the characteristics of the tumor clinically. Where did it metastasize? What's the origin of the tumor? So when I see a patient with metastatic colorectal cancer, the first question in my mind is where are the metastases? Are they potentially resectable for a curative outcome? The second question is sidedness, because left-sided colon cancer behaves differently than right-sided colon cancer. The third question is going to be, what is the molecular profile of the patient? Does the patient benefit from targeted therapy or immunotherapy? And once I have all these factors all together and I have defined the best possible approach in my mind for that patient, I have a very, very in-depth discussion with my patient as to what are the goals of the treatment, what is important for that patient as far as treatment management, the, cyto the toxicities of the agents, what is going to be our goal, are we going for surgery, is there a potential for cure? The initial treatment of metastatic colorectal cancer is influenced by various different factors nowadays. Of course, we talk about molecular factors and sightedness, but I think also patient factors like age, tumor burden, goal of therapy, performance status, comorbidities really play a major role. The question is really, what do we need to use in order to make the largest difference for a patient, recognizing the patient factors that we talked about? Then, of course, molecular factors come into play. And I do believe that we need to test for key factors to really make right treatment decisions for patients. RAS and BRAF mutation status, HER2 expression level, and MSI status, which potentially opens the door for immunotherapy, and then overarching, of course, the sightedness. So all these factors get taken into account. I think we all agree on that a, for the average patient, a chemotherapy doublet serves a backbone for the addition of biologic agents. And we use Falfox or Falfieri or Capecidin, Oxapla, and Capox. These choice of the biologic will depend on the molecular factors and sightedness. For instance, at least in first-line treatment, we would not use an egf receptor antibody in right-sided tumors. The refined patient population that can benefit from panitumab and cetuximab are these patients with left-sided tumors, RAS and RAF wild-type tumors, and potentially HER2 negative tumors. And those tumors make up about 25 to 30 percent of patients. These patients should preferably, if we really give an, an, a biologic agent in first line, receive an EGF receptor antibody and not bevacizumab. And there are nuances in terms, do you really need a chemotherapy doublet? Can you get away with a single agent capsidabin treatment, for instance, in smoldering low volume disease with bevacizumab added? Do you need a triplet? perhaps some more aggressive right-sided tumors, BRAF mutant tumors, et cetera. So that is really the standard of care at this point in time. Now, there are subgroups where we have experimental approaches toward, let's say, different first-line treatments like MSI high tumors, immunogenic tumors, where immune therapy up front might be the way forward. We don't have randomized data yet, but the data that we've seen from single uh, arm studies are very intriguing. And then potentially in BRAF v 600 e mutant tumors, Biologic regimens are now stand of care in second and third line treatment. Why wouldn't they use? Uh, wouldn't they work in first line? But that's an area of investigation right now. So while there's uh, increasing data on how we should optimally use biologics, there's also uh, data on how do we optimally use the cytotoxics, and uh, data that uh, that came from the original tribe study and then more recently the tribe two study has really suggested an overall survival benefit for patients when we start with a triplet cytotoxic, uh, Fulfoxiri regimen, or sometimes we call Fulfirinox regimen, with the idea of using an infusional 5-FU or Renatecan and oxaliplatin together. Now, this is a very different type of treatment strategy than what has been seen and uh, we think of traditionally. So the idea of starting with some duration of, uh, of Fulfoxiri 
uh, you know, six, eight weeks or perhaps a little more, and then backing off to a maintenance of 5-FU. This is commonly done uh, in combination with bevacizumab uh, as well. Um, and if the patient progresses on that maintenance 5-FU and bevacizumab, then reintroducing uh, back to the Fulfoxiri and bevacizumab as well. So in that sense, uh, you have two lines of therapy uh, that you're providing a patient. And the TRIBE-2 study, when we did that in comparison to the Fulfox and bevacizumab with maintenance and then Fulfiri and bevacizumab with maintenance, uh, suggested a survival benefit. So this is being utilized uh, especially in patients with KRAS mutated tumors or right-sided primaries where uh, we don't have uh, uh, as many biologic options with the anti-EGFR therapies.